What's up everyone, this is Stealth, and I'm back with another build video. Oh, my voice. Oh, oh. Let's do that over. Hey everyone, this is Stealth, and I'm back with another build. I'll be building the Winter Soldier arm. You can make the base arm out of EVA foam, and then you can decide which arm you want to make. You can make this arm from Winter Soldier, his original one, or the newer one, the black and gold, from the Falcon and the Winter Soldier series, or Infinity War, uh, his white wolf arm that people like to call it. So if you want to make your own Winter Soldier arm, silver or black, it's up to you. You can get the foam peppercor file template and it will also come with the Winter Soldier mask. The mask will be included with the arm. So you can get the files, build your arm and mask, and you can cosplay as Winter Soldier. And as always, if you're new to Peppacura foam building and cosplay in general and you want to get started, this is a great way to get into the hobby. I have an in-depth video on my channel and learn all the techniques. You can build a sample project and then you can apply all those techniques you learned on a sample project on any foam peppercora file you come across and it should be no problem. So I'll be building the Winter Soldier arm in this video. If you guys want me to make a Winter Soldier mask tutorial as well, you gotta let me know. Please comment down below, like the video, do all that stuff. Let me know you want the mask as well. But for now, we're just gonna make the arm. Enjoy the build everyone, follow along closely. That way you can make your own arm, you won't have any issues. Remember, be patient, I just kind of rushed this for the tutorial, like, be more clean with your lines and all that. But, but like always, with practice, you'll probably end up making a way better one than me, but hey, I'm proud of mine. Uh, mine turned out pretty nice, I gotta say. So, see you guys later. Before you print out the templates, is on the Peppercore Designer, you need to set the scale for at least one of the sections. So the easiest one to scale for is the form. So how I scaled mine, I went from the inner part of the elbow, the inner arm, to basically the top of the form, where it begins, to my wrist. So I just got a ruler, you can get measuring tape, whatever you like, from the form where it's going to start. So I have about 9.5 inch, where I want it to end right here, right at the sleeve at my wrist there. Like where a shirt would end. So what you do is you go to the peppercore designer. So I'm going to go right click, measure distance between two points, and then go from the inner part of the form like you did on your actual form. Click there and then click somewhere on the end here. So it's 10.31, so it's too big. I'm going to go down 10%. Okay, so I'm going to try again. 9.37. So I could leave it there or I can increase the scale a little bit so that way I can get uh, 9.5 so I'm gonna go increase the width of just the entire model as it is just so I can play around with the numbers just to get that length to change to 9.5 so I'll just put 15.3 maybe that will increase it enough so it's increase the file size yep it's held there okay, so now I'm gonna try again 9.44, so that's probably fine. I'm gonna leave it there. Okay, so I have the three pages that will make up the form. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut these out only, and then I'm gonna um, tape them together, like I said earlier. And then I will uh, try it on and see how what adjustments I can make, if I can make it more snug, without actually having to rescale it in the Peppercore software and then reprint it. So I can probably modify the paper. And then once that's good, I can transfer it onto the foam. All the templates have been cut out for the forearm section. So what you wanna do is tape all the seams here together. And then you wanna tape where the numbers uh, line up. You're gonna to wanna to use packing tape for all the seams. So that way they don't come apart when you're tracing them onto the foam. So I taped the templates together just with masking tape and some packing tape on the seams just to test the scale. It looks, it fits pretty good. I know it's kind of messy, but that uh, sometimes happens in pattern making probably be using six millimeter thick foam, probably about right for this kind of project. When you're uh, taping them together, try to get the seam that comes down lined up with these two sections. Try to tape it together so that these seams line up, basically. That way when you glue the foam together, it will follow like the seam right here so you can just fill the seam all the way down. That way you don't have one seam here and then one seam over there, just to make it simple. Okay, so templates are ready to go. I'm gonna apply them to the foam and trace them. 
So all you do is take the templates with the tape. Make sure you tape the seams really well so that way they don't open up. And all you just simply press down and then squish it. As long as this, as long as the edges maintain the natural shape, they'll be able to glue to the other side, especially this one here is the most important one because it has the numbers. That's the side that's actually going to be gluing to the next piece. So just take your time, do it section by section. It should be fine. Okay. Like I said, this edge is very important because that's the one that's going to be gluing to this one here once we uh, apply the contact cement. Okay, so this, make a note. Just put like A for the edge. Okay, just so you know. And then B is for the uh, wrist. So that way you know which side connects to what, especially this piece here. It's a, it's almost like straight, so you know, it might not know how it's gonna connect. So like, it might connect it like this. I don't know if it's gonna make much difference, but try to be as close as possible to the original uh, assembly as shown in the Peppercore Designer. Okay, so I'm just gonna put a B here. That way I know B to B, A to A. Simple. Remember, this is the forearm piece, so you're gonna apply these same techniques to the bicep and the delt section. And it's pretty much the same thing, so once you do that, it should be fine. Okay, so we're gonna cut it out. I'm just gonna use a hobby knife, or exacto knife, whatever you like to call it. Okay, there's no angled cuts for the forearm, but um, the bicep has some angled cuts, but I think I'll show you guys that. Okay, so now we have all the pieces cut out. What you're gonna wanna do now is heat shape them. So what you're gonna want is that curve to return. So we're gonna use a styrofoam ball with aluminum foil wrapped just to absorb the heat. And then we're gonna take a heat gun. We're gonna heat up the foam as much as possible without burning it. So remember to keep moving the heat gun across the foam. Don't leave it in one spot. And then we're gonna quickly take the foam to the styrofoam ball and then we're gonna heat shape it. We're gonna do that to this piece and this piece and just a little bit of this piece, not too much, because this one's gonna stay pretty, pretty flat for the wrist section. So now we're gonna glue the sections together for the Winter Soldier arm. I'm gonna be using contact cement, so remember to wear gloves. Remember to also turn your head and cough. So I have a foam, piece of scrap foam as a spreader. I'm just gonna put that on. Apply it on both sides, like each edge that's gonna touch. The contact cement needs to stick to itself. You can't just put it on one side. I say this in every video, and I always will, because Someone might be new, passing through the channel and they're like, what's this guy doing? What is that uh, butterscotch stuff? I'm always gonna say the same thing, so. Just like Bob Ross always said the same stuff. Odorless paint thinner. Beat the devil out of it. Scrub the old brush in odorless paint thinner. And we'll take and shake off the excess. <laughs> and beat the devil out of it. So the contact cement is tacky, so it's like a little bit sticky, but not gooey. So we're gonna start gluing the pieces together. Okay, so this is the forearm section assembled. I left the uh, wrist open, so I'm just gonna try to put it on now. Okay. So I left the wrist section open. So what I'm gonna do here is, I'm gonna probably put Velcro. And then put it on, have a nice piece of Velcro here. Just close it, and then it should be fine. So if you have the Velcro attached, right here, 
So just picture the Velcro being there. Okay, you have your arm here. So you take this and you're just gonna probably just use this. But I suggest still putting Velcro so that way it's a little bit more closed. But yeah, this glove, this kind of glove, I'll link this in the description. You can find these in any style. There's a lot of different styles, but yeah. This can also hold it together too. Definitely put the Velcro and uh, it should be okay. Okay, here are the bicep pieces cut out. You can see some have a gluing tab. That means that the delt is gonna glue on top of that. A lot of these techniques are taught in the foam Pepakura uh, cosplay tutorial. So refer to that as to when to do things like this. So before we start gluing this together, we're gonna need to heat shape again. So I'm gonna start assembling it. Always refer to the Peppercore Designer software to see what piece connects to what, and you should be fine. Also, another thing I wanna mention before I start, uh, this gluing tab is for uh, like bicep and tricep pieces. For the 3D effect to work, the piece that's sitting on top of the gluing tab needs to be beveled. So yeah, make sure you keep that in mind because that way you're not gonna get the effect. Uh, it's gonna to be too much of, um, of a curve if you do it just like a straight cut. So you need at least a bevel cut. So it looks more natural. Hope that makes sense. I just want to show you guys something with the bicep. I uh, trimmed it down right here down the middle because it was a little bit too bulky. I want to be more fitted. So I just took, probably just cut out a, a section on the bicep area. So if the bicep is too big for you, like if this whole section is too big, uh, just take out a strip little by little and then just kind of fit it. And then when you're happy with it, then you can glue it. Yeah, it's better here because there's more meat there. You don't want to mess with the tricep because you put a lot of work into that. So take from here and then get a little bit smaller as you go. Don't take too much because then the tricep will, you know, it'll come out too far into the back. But if you need, you're going to have to take some here as well. Like don't take too much. If you're going to need to take that much, you should have scaled it probably a little bit smaller. Oh, another thing I'll tell you. So I cut out a lot of the uh, material that was in there. It just got in the way in the armpit area. So it's better just to cut like a kind of like a, a U. So there's nothing like hitting it, stopping it from going up all the way. I've already sanded down the seams on this. I just used some sandpaper. I used, uh, I think it's 60 grit. And then I went over it with uh, 240. You can go over little by little, 120, 240. Go up as you go. And then I hit it with a heat gun. So I'm just gonna show you guys on this form. So I'm gonna take away the seam here. So you can use like a rotary tool or, um, palm sander you can check my other videos I use different things whatever I feel like like I said you can also use a palm sander to speed things up I sanded it down I went uh, 60 120 240 
Now we're just gonna use a heat gun, reduce some of the roughness, and heat seal it. So we're gonna use some quick seal uh, to hide the seams as much as possible. So we're just gonna apply it and use a spreader. I'm using this playing card like I always use, nice and flexible, and just apply it and then feather it into the foam so that way it blends in. So I'm just gonna apply it directly on, on the seam. You're just gonna go to any other seams that you've sanded down, do the same thing to the rest of the winter soldier arm. And then once that's dry, we're gonna do some detail lines. Okay, the quick seal has dried and uh, it's, I put it pretty much like almost everywhere. I smoothed it out with water and all that. And uh, it can be a little bit rough, especially if you're doing that. So what you're gonna wanna do is get some very, very high grit sandpaper. Like this is 400, I suggest going even higher than this. And just uh, sand the roughness down around the seams and just over any areas you feel that roughness. So it's very smooth. You can see I had it uh, I added a lot of uh, quick seal in a lot of these seams, especially here and here, just so it makes it more obviously seamless, right? So that helps a lot. But the thing is, before you sand uh, quick seal, let it dry overnight, because if you don't, uh, it's going to get gummy and just kind of peel off. Another thing is the high grit sandpaper. So don't use anything lower than 400, but I recommend going even higher than that. So now it's time to do detail lines. So just get some reference online and with a marker, draw out all the details. This is going to take a long time. It's pretty detailed. And then you're going to score all the details. shoulder bicep and uh, forearm with all the detail lines. It's kind of uh, quickly rushed, but the lines will be cleaner when I actually do them. Uh, make sure to take your time with it. Obviously, like I'm rushing this for the tutorial. And for the forearm section, I added an uh, extension, but I need a little bit more so that the glove can wrap around. So you can see because of the wrist extension, there's less of a gap in the arm itself. So yeah, now that I did all the detail lines, time to etch them out and we can seal and then prime and paint, and this thing's pretty much done. We are gonna do the detail lines. So you could do the traditional way I do in all my videos, where I score it with a blade, just lightly, you know, obviously you're not gonna wanna go all the way through. So just score the lines, and then with a heat gun, you know, apply the heat onto the areas. It opens up the lines, obviously makes them more defined because of the, the heat, you know, separating the, the space there a wood burning tool I usually use it for bowel damage but if you're careful you know and kind of like you know lightly score remember your remember, make sure you're in a well ventilated area see the thing is you have to get one that heats up really hot so get one that you can adjust the temperature the thing is with these the more you use it the more it starts to cool down so you might have to give it some time to reheat if you got a cheap one like me so I recommend investing in a really good one 
it's pretty straightforward. Like I said, it's very time consuming. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do this because that's basically the the concept. So I don't wanna just you know take my time and just do this off camera. I'll be back. So all the detail lines are done. Remember to like remember to make sure you uh, wipe off any of the little bits that come off because you don't want that to be in the uh, sealing solution. It'll leave like little bumps everywhere. So try to clean it as much as possible. Maybe even use like a brush to get them out. Actually, maybe use like a brush here. If you see any. The Winter Soldier parts are ready to seal before paint. You gotta seal it because the foam is porous. If you don't seal it, when you paint it, especially with metallics, the uh, the color will just become flat. So this gives a nice smooth layer, and then the paint will bond to that, and it will still retain its uh, you know vibrance. Okay, so to seal it, I'm going to use Bounce. It's like a PVA glue type liquid uh, with a rubberizer in it. It works great with EVA foam. I always use it. You can also use uh, regular PVA glue. I use this. It's tacky glue. It's easier to find. And Mod Podge. I apply one layer with a foam brush. That's pretty much all you need. This one here, you can apply w without mixing it with water, but I recommend adding a little bit of water just so it's a little bit smoother. Put the foam brush in and away you go. arm parts are all painted looks really good okay so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna add the star to the shoulder so I just cut out a template of a star I'm just gonna place it here on the uh, delt shoulder whatever we like to call it just kind of just center it okay so I just outline the star I'm actually gonna hand paint it Probably gonna take a couple coats. It's looking pink right now. Much better. Uh, for all these detail lines, you could do a wash. You can check out any of my other videos. Um, I'm actually gonna just uh, take a gunmetal paint with a fine brush and go through all the detail lines by hand. I know it's uh, tedious, but you know, I actually don't mind doing it. It's very relaxing to paint by hand. I picked gunmetal because black is gonna be too, you know, too obvious. I want gunmetal because it still has a silver tone to it and it's not too dark and it blends in very well. It makes it more subtle when you see the lines. You can already tell. The lines stand out a lot more. Okay, so I did all the uh, panel lining. Looks really good. I really like it a lot. See, that's much better than um, than just leaving it because you can barely see it. See, especially with a lot of light, I prefer doing the panel lining. If you don't want to, you know, hand paint all the detail lines, it's gonna take forever. So what you can do is a wash. So you water down some acrylic paint. You can use black. I used a dark gunmetal paint that I already had. I just watered it down a bit. Just so it like blends in a bit better to the silver. Black can work too, it should be fine. So all you do is get a brush, like I said, water it down. And you just fill in all the detail lines with the wash. Okay, don't worry, you're not gonna make a mess. You want all this to get in, that's why it's watery. You want it to, 
to get in there all the little grooves then with a the paper towel just wipe wipe all the surface off and then the wash will end up remaining in all the detail lines that way you don't have to hand paint them and take forever yeah I lost my patience I'm gonna be honest so I did the wash and if you do it quick enough it's not gonna ruin your shine on your metallic paint and if there is some paint on the surface just take some water wet your paper towel and then a wipe and it should come off so you don't have to hand paint guys you guys can use a wash technique I want to actually do one more thing I want to put a clear coat so I'm gonna use floor wax like I usually do so I'm just gonna cover both sections with a coat of floor wax and then I'm gonna do the velcro uh, right here and it pretty much should be done all right let's do it be using this pledge floor wax I've used this um, a few times yeah I just put one coat and I'm gonna spray it out of the spray gun I also when I did the test I used a sponge to you know put it on you could use a foam brush as well you don't need to use a spray a spray gun or airbrush Floor wax is now dry. You can see the shine. I'm just gonna put the Velcro, take contact cement, just put on the inner seam. Then you're gonna take the, uh, I guess this is the loop part of the Velcro. So I have two strips, and okay, they're gonna go on the inside. I'm just gonna place the the Velcro. So then you're gonna use this one as a bridge. Okay, you may wanna make a point. I wanna make a point of this. Cause else is gonna hit the other uh, side. I don't want that yet. See what I mean? So it's going to be the bridge, and then when you put it on, you close it, it should, uh, okay. So for the glove, I'm just going to use this, uh, fancy, elegant <laughs> gown, uh, metallic silver glove. I could have probably found a better darker shade but I'll leave a link if you guys want to use it if you want you can add the rings like the bionic rings for the fingers and uh, I have obviously get two so I'm using this as um, an elbow sleeve so that way it's the in between and it fills the gap of the bicep and forearm and then once I have everything on I put this fingerless glove so with that last detail the winter soldier arm is now complete Okay, so that was the foam cosplay winter soldier arm hope you guys enjoyed it this is stealth from heroes workshop and i'll see you guys next week with another build